Welcome back, One Nation, to another episode of A Thing or Two About a Thing or Two podcast. Today, I'm joined by former tennis player at the University of Lynchburg, Ellen Drubish. Ellen, I want to say thank you for taking the time to join me today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Well, we have a lot to talk about. You've been up to plenty of good things, and we're excited for you. But first, I want to talk about, and first, I want to ask you, what did you study here at the University of Lynchburg, and uh, what are you doing with that degree now? Yeah, so I was a biomedical science major um, during my undergrad at Lynchburg, and I also had minors in biology and health promotion. So a lot of biology and chemistry, and then a little bit of public health on the side. And now I'm pursuing my master in public health at um, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And they have a combined program where I'll also become a registered dietitian. So still getting the public health and then also um, the nutrition aspect of it. Well, what made you want to go and get your master's degree, especially at a place like UNC? I mean, that's a pretty big deal. Um, Well, coming into college, I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be um, in healthcare, doing something, helping people. Um, I sort of thought that I might want to do like work in a lab, do some sort of medical research. Um, But I sort of realized I wanted to be out more in the community, something like that. And I took a like introductory nutrition class with Dr. Price. Um, And I just fell in love with like how nutrition impacts every single person. Um, And there's a lot of science behind it. And I like the science aspect of it well as well. Um, So I just knew that I needed to go get a master's. And I knew if I um, took a year off, I probably wouldn't want to go back. Um, So I just um, decided to go right into it. And it's been really awesome so far. So you mentioned wanting to help people and you knew you wanted to go into the medical field. You wanted to do do something to help make a difference. What sparked that? Was it something that happened to you when you were younger or is it just someone, maybe someone in your family? What kind of just sparked that interest in that direction? That's a really good question. Um, My sister's a nurse. So I guess kind of seeing what she does. um, I don't know. I've always sort of wanted to work with people. I love being around people. Um, and throughout my time at Lynchburg, I got more comfortable working with bigger groups of people and being able to lead them. Um, so I think just being out in the public in communities, being able to do that with something that I really like, like nutrition, um, I think it's just the perfect intersection of everything I love. (laughs) So let me ask you with such an interest in nutrition and health, How did that factor into your time as an athlete here at the University of Lynchburg? Clearly, you were one of those people who was always on top of, you know, what we were eating and, you know, how much exercise, what are we working today? How did that play into a role in some of your athletic success? Yeah, I mean, I have always been someone that I think it's really important to fuel fuel your body and fueling your body properly is really important. And um, I don't know, I love to eat. (laughs) So for me, it was never an issue. Um, like not having enough food before practice or before a match or something. Um, But there were definitely times at practice where some of the girls would come down and be like, oh, I ate a granola bar today. And I was like, well, we should probably be eating more than that before we come to practice. Um, And then once we got the nutrition or fueling station um, in Wake with Coach Smith and Coach Wilson, um, I thought that that was a really awesome way because I know Um, as an athlete, if you're lifting like in between classes or something like that, it's hard to get something to eat. So that was really awesome to be able to have a snack in between everything that we were doing. So now I want to ask you, you're at North Carolina, coming from the University of Lynchburg, what were some of the things that Lynchburg did to help prepare you for, you know, a big school like UNC, high standards? What are some of the things that helped guide you through that process, or at least put you in a position where maybe you're not so overwhelmed with the Tar Heels now? Um, I mean, it's been a little bit overwhelming just the size of everything here. Um, Lynchburg is so small and the biggest class I had was probably like 40 people. And now the smallest class I have is like 55 or 60. Wow. Um, so it's definitely <laughs> um, a big difference that way. Um, but I think being in a small setting at Lynchburg really gave me the confidence to be able to speak up in class and get to know the people around me. And now I'm like almost two weeks in, I guess. And um, I love my classes. I love my professors. Um, I've met a really a lot of really awesome people in my classes. Um, and I think Lynchburg just gave me the confidence more so than every anything um, to be able to go into the situation and know that I can do it and I can um, 
be as good as anyone else here. <laughs> no doubt. And I also want to ask you, so going back to when you were playing tennis here at the University of Lynchburg, that's an individual sport. And I feel like there might be even more to that where it's like, I have got to put in more work into my sport, my game. It's probably pretty unilateral across every sport here. But how did you go about balancing your time between being one of the best players on your team, wanting to have success in, you know, the athletic world, but then also making sure like, Hey, I got to get these grades, got to be able to do what I can to graduate. How do you balance those two different you know, juggernauts uh, in your world? Um, yeah. So growing up, I played a lot of sports and my parents always told me that school has to come first. So if you aren't getting like the great expectations that they had, then we would back off of sports. So I think just from an early age, um, I learned how important school was and that that needs to come first. Um, so coming to Lynchburg, I think I think my first semester as a freshman, I got a little overwhelmed, um, staying up too late, taking too many naps, that kind of thing, just in a bad pattern. But then after that, I started realizing, well, if I really just get my work done during the day, go do homework between classes, um, something like that, then it's a lot easier to manage all of it. I'm also a huge proponent of a planner. Um, <laughs> I had a planner that had everything I needed to do, all of my practices, all my classes, all my assignments, all that. Um, and so I think that really helped me a lot too, just to keep everything organized. Um, yeah. And also while tennis is a very you know individual sport, obviously you're a part of a team. Can you kind of talk about how your team helps you in those academic situations, whether it's, you know, making sure everybody's together studying or being accountable for one another, making sure, Hey, you turned in this assignment, right? We, we need you to be on the roster. We need you to be eligible to play all those sorts of elements that come into a team environment. Yeah. Um, coming when I came in as a freshman, Reagan, Sarah, and Lily were um, all juniors on the team. And they really set a high standard for making sure that you were getting what you needed to get done in the classroom. Um, and I really looked up to them with how successful they were in their academics. And I think for me, that just kind of gave me the confidence that, okay, I can balance all of it. Um, and I think as a team, we have a reputation of having a pretty high GPA on the team. So I think we really try to kind of make jokes at practice, but also hold each other accountable to make sure we're going to class, make sure we're turning everything in, um, studying for tests, um, not staying up to like ridiculous hours doing all that, still getting sleep. Um, so yeah, I think that we have, we try to like keep it pretty lighthearted, but we definitely do make sure that everyone's getting what they need to get done. A case of a little bit of truth in every joke at the tennis practice is what I'm hearing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whatever gets the job done, right? Yes. I also want to talk to you about a big honor that came your way. You were just awarded a NCAA post-grad scholarship. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Do you want to talk about maybe the process that went into that or what it means to even just come away with such a big honor? Yeah, so we had, um, I was involved in SAC on campus and we had a SAC meeting, I don't know, probably back in January, February, something like that. Um, and Dr. Dean came on and he's our faculty athletic representative. And he talked about how there are all these scholarships um, for student athletes who were wanting to pursue postgraduate degrees. And um, immediately I was like, oh, money, that's like what I need. Um, so I sent him an email and just sort of asked him like what I needed to do for that. And we basically just put together an application, um, had a few people write, um, letters of recommendation. I wrote a personal statement and submitted it, and I didn't really have super high hopes of getting it, um, just because there's such a big pool of people who apply to all the spring female athletes in all the divisions. Um, and then I got an email in July, and I like almost started crying. I was so excited. Um, I had already decided to come to Chapel Hill and everything, um, but just that amount of money that I don't have to take out in loans <laughs> is really nice. Um, and it was just a huge honor to be selected by the NCAA for such like a big award. I don't know, it just felt really good. <laughs> yeah, so on that point, compared to your athletic accolades that are maybe for you know a good week or a good year or whatever the case may be, how does this stack up against it? Because I almost look at it in the sense of this was four years in the making. So it has to taste that much sweeter compared to some of the athletic awards that you've garnered. 
Yes, um, I think that it definitely feels better than a few of the athletic awards um, because I think it's a combination of athletic success and academic success. And those are two things that I really focused on throughout my time at Lynchburg. So like you said, it was kind of just the culmination of four years of really hard work and it just felt really nice to be recognized. Getting your cake and eating it too, <laughs> I like your style. Easy question here. What were some of the things about the University of Lynchburg that you enjoyed the most here, especially from the academic side? What do you think some of those key factors were to help you have some of the academic success that you did? Yeah, I loved being part of the West River Honors College um, right from the start that just kind of gave me a community on campus um, that I took classes with all four years. Um, it also gave me some really great professors that I built, built um, wonderful relationships with. And on the professor's note, um, just being in a small classroom at Lynchburg was really nice because you got to know your professors. Um, it was easy to go to office hours and ask for help, um, especially being an athlete. It was nice to have that sort of relationship in case we were missing for a match or something like that. Um, I also was part of the PASS program as a PASS leader. Um, I went to PASS um, for a couple of my classes, but I really enjoyed um, having that opportunity to help others in their academic career as well. Um, I think in general, just the community that surrounds Lynchburg, everyone is wanting everyone else to do really well. Um, and I think that that was just a really awesome environment to be in. Awesome. Well, one final question. You've already talked about it. You're in the process of getting your master's. What do you hope to do after you leave North Carolina? What do you hope to do post-grad? That's what everybody's got to be wondering. <laughs> That is a really good question. Um, I'm not 100% set on anything. Um, at Lynchburg, my background was in biology and chemistry, so I didn't have a lot of exposure to public health or nutrition. Um, so I'm sort of interested to see like what all there actually is that I can do. Um, I know I'm interested in community nutrition um, or working like in a school system to provide nutrition, education and resources um, to more like underserved populations, or I guess like a dream of mine, which I don't know if <laughs> this would happen. Um, I think it'd be really cool to open some sort of like fitness facility, like some sort of gym and have um, like a nutrition counseling component to that as well and work with women um, and like middle school, high school aged girls, um, just to really promote like how to keep your body healthy, body positivity, that kind of thing. Because I think that's something that our nation as a whole sort of needs a little bit of right now. <laughs> I'm all for that idea. I think you can take it and run, but one thing for certain, whatever you do, put your head down and decide to take on after you graduate and leave the University of North Carolina, I have full confidence that you will make the most of it. You will make the University of Lynchburg very proud. And I want to say thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ellen. And thank you, everybody who tuned in to this episode of A Thing or Two About A Thing or Two podcast. Be sure to check in next week for more. And until then, we are signing off.